The world of chess is massive, and there are a lot of young, talented players who we don't really hear about. Now, as we all know, we've had a little bit of a story with Indonesia recently, but it's taken a positive turn. And so recently, Kumparan and CNN have been talking about Satria Duta, this brilliant young chess player from Indonesia who's potentially going to be their next big grandmaster. I played a Blitz game in August 2020 against Satria, and I wanted to dedicate this special video to analyzing that game, and then after I analyze the game, I will show you how strong Satria actually is, what his potential is, and go through some of the other opponents that I've played from Indonesia. And for my new Indonesian fans, I have subtitles. They are auto-translated, so I hope they're correct. Let's jump into the game. So this was a three-minute game played on chess.com, August 2020. I have the blank pieces, and Satria begins the game with d4. Knight to f6, bishop f4. This is known as the London system. It's a very flexible opening. I play it myself with white. There's a lot of ways to play. Now I play b6. This is not a normal way to play. Normally I try to play bishop b7 here and I don't put any pawns in the center. Uh, in fact, the game was very non-standard. It was very weird. I made this knight move early trying to get the bishop, trying to take my opponent out of his comfort zone and make a really strange position early. You'll notice I chase his bishop away with my pawns, and then he plays this nice knight move, basically saying, hey, if you take my bishop, I've opened up my queen to your knight, and this would be very good for me. And he's correct. So I did not take his bishop. Instead, I drop my, my knight back to g7, and he plays bishop here. Now I kick out his knight with pawn to d6, the knight moves back, and I follow the journey of my knight to the bishop. Now, at this point, white plays knight d2, I play e6, he attacks my knight with his bishop, takes, takes, bishop g7. So I've pushed my pawns pretty far on the side of the board, uh, but my bishops are standing nice and pretty, kind of controlling the center from a distance, and my opponent plays que uh, c3 and queen e2. Now, when my opponent is not castling this way, it's showing me that, my, that he wants to castle long, and I'm probably not going to castle short. Why would I not castle short when I've already pushed my pawns here? This is just a little bit too dangerous, right? So I played queen e7, and we both went long. Now this is move 15. At this point, I have like a 30 second time advantage. So in blitz, that's important. That's, that's a lot of time, right? So we've made it out of the opening. What can we say about the position? First of all, we both have eight pawns. When you have a lot of pawns on the board, it means the position is very closed. So we want to trade pawns at some moment. My opponent takes the center. I move my king out of the way. And then I notice that there's a square available here for me to reroute my knight to try to get to f4. Right? He plays e5. So this is a small mistake just because, you know, I have the bishops. So I want the position open, but he really wants to keep the position more closed. Right? So e5 kind of gives me a little bit of a target. Now, I really tried to open the position here with this pawn move. And this is a, a bold decision, it's very risky. My opponent takes, takes, and here allows me to play queen f4 check. And I have a choice, can I take this pawn or not? Now, to be honest with you, I don't know why I didn't. I thought, I guess I thought that even though I'm winning a pawn, my queen is kind of away from the other pieces and it could get trapped somehow. So instead I played c4 and the idea is that they cannot take because the bishop has to protect the knight here. So bishop to c2, and I played b5. So, at this point, I've made some bad mistakes. This whole plan that I played was terrible. My opponent made a small mistake, I made a giant mistake. Why? Because now my opponent can play this move. And this knight is super strong, and it's transferred from a passive square here to an active square on c5. I've overextended the pawns in front of my king. I should not have pushed so many pawns in front of my king. So what I did, I put my bishop out, my opponent offers me a trade, and I'm like, mm, I don't really wanna take, because then if I do this, my, look, at, look at all this, I, so much open space. My king is wide open, eh, right? So that's not good, so I decide to go here and keep my position a bit more closed. But here, opponent finds a very nice idea. Satria plays a4. In any position, there's correct pawn breaks. An, a spot where you can offer a trade of pawns, and if I take, I weaken everything. So they're going to bring in the queen, and then they're going to destroy me. I'm like, okay, I can't do that. I need to trade my opponent's active knight. Takes, takes, 
takes. I'm down one pawn, but I traded the active knight on c5, and maybe I have a chance in the endgame. Now here, again, I'm stupid, so I don't take this pawn. I don't know why I didn't take it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you do stupid stuff. Instead, I played this move, protecting this pawn, but now my opponent goes here, and I'm never going to take that pawn. And my logic here was, okay, I'm down one pawn. Let's just go to an endgame. This kind of endgame. Maybe I won't lose. I'm going to go rook b7. Opponent takes. I take. Opponent goes here because I'm attacking a pawn, so they want my pawn. And I go here. I say, you can't have that pawn. What does he do? Check. And he goes for the pawn. Finds the right idea. Low time. He had like 40 seconds here. Finds this good idea to go here. So I take, take. And then I played rookie one check. My logic was that if here, then this. Opponent goes this way. Uh-oh. Mistake by me. I go rookie four looking to get this. Defense. Now I go back looking for this pawn again. The problem is that after this trade, I have four pawn islands. So my pawns are all separated, which is very bad. Look at my opponent's pawn structure all together. He has two pawn islands, but they're together. Two and three on the other side. So it's really good in the end game. And because it's a low time situation, I have a small chance of defending this. It attacks my pawn. I go back and defend. But now here comes the king. The king. And now the king is active. And I'm going to lose my pawn. So he finds all the right ideas. What I should have played? Probably a5. Stopping this. And then if this, then this. And I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I can hold this position. But I allowed his king to get active. And then he took. And I can't take this or this. Because his rook is pressuring both of my pawns. His rook is on the perfect square. Because it's pressuring both of my pawns. So now I'm down two pawns, and the rest of the game, it's, it's low time for both of us, but he's converting it very well. First of all, he trades some of his pawns. Now, I make some good defensive moves here, and I actually win both pawns, but it's still losing. <laughs> it's still losing for me, because he has two pawns. Two on one in, in a rook end game is winning if the pawns are together and if the king is active. And the rest of the game, he just pushes the pawns. Just push, 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 push. And there's nothing I can do. I can't stop the pawns. Good conversion from, uh, from Satria. And, you know, here he sacrifices the queen. Very important. I mean, I know I can take the queen, but that leaves me with just one pawn. And then he sacks the rook. So his final pawn becomes a queen. And uh, I lost on time in, a few, in, in, in some moves. I ran out of time some while later. He chased me around. And I think at this point, he won on time, but of course he's going to checkmate me. But in Blitz, you know, if you have five seconds, of course you try to play and win on time. But a great game uh, from Satria. And like I said, I wanted to show the game, right? It was a very complicated position from the opening. Uh, I tried to make it a wild game, and he played very well. I mean, he made maybe one small, you know, very, very small mistake. And then I, I mean, I didn't take advantage and he immediately jumped in with the knight. He jumped in with the bishop and then this move. This is where it got very bad for me. So very nice game from him. It's the only game we've ever played. Maybe we will play in the future. Um, but, you know, for, the, for this next part of the video, I wanted to really showcase who my opponent is. So my opponent is born in 2008, okay? And if you go to my, uh, if you go to the the rankings of Indonesia, okay? The international rankings on the FIDE page of Indonesia. This is amazing. Look at this. So this is FIDE, right? This is all of the best active players. So for example, Utut Adianto, who doesn't play currently, is not listed. But if you go all the way down, right? And you, and you actually, we could just make this easy. Satria. Satria Duta is like number 200 in the country. But this is not super accurate because there are not a lot of tournaments. Satria mostly plays online. Satria could be all the way up there, all the way up here, 21, 2200. But 2008, he is the youngest player on this entire list. The youngest player. No one else is born in 2008. There are a few people who are born in 2006. For example, Aditya Bagusarfan, he's in uh, 2006, rated 2200. But maybe someone in 2007. But Satria is the youngest player. And, uh, this is him, <laughs> rated 1820. This will be like 2200 in some years. And this is the chess.com account, right? 0 and 1. But look at this. He has played 5,000 games of chess. 5,500 games of chess. 
since making his account. He's probably, and look at this, he's beaten, like he's playing all the time, right? And here's something even more amazing. I've played some more players from Indonesia, right? I've played one of their best players, Navendra Priyasmoro. He's beaten me many times. Most of these games, I think, are bullet games. Yeah, 30 second games, some blitz games, mostly 2018. So it's been a long time since I've actually played Novendra. But look at Novendra. Look at, look at that. That's Satria. And that game was played a week ago. And Novendra lost to Satria. He's also beaten him sometimes. But he lost in, 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 in bullet chest. To, so this kid is really good. And he's gotten good... And a lot of kids like Santria become very strong by playing so much and practicing so much online. There are so many resources out there now for the young players. Um, here's another player, Masruri Rahman. I've played him so many times. Um, another player, Gilbert Elroy uh, Tarigan. I've played him seven times. Four wins for me, three for him. Um, and it just, it's just amazing, you know, that... Um, that this that this player was was spotted like by the media and now the whole story is taking a positive approach like there are very talented young players not just in Indonesia in many countries who play online and practice online and play thousands and thousands of games and that is how they learn to get better so i i saw this um I saw this story, you know, coming out now on Instagram and on YouTube and on and some some place on Twitter as well. And I, I just wanted to make a video and say these players are out there. And uh, I wish Satria and his family all the best. And, and I hope that one day he will become uh, the number one player in the country. He's currently the youngest talent that, that they have and seems to be uh, extremely good beating grandmasters uh, who are better than me at chess. So... I just wanted to make this video because it's, you know, we should have something positive to discuss. And um, the young generation now is stronger than they have ever been. So, Teddy Makasi to my Indonesian fans, and I'll see you in the next video.